by a miracle I got a day off which is very rare I'm gonna be out of town all next week working 350 miles away so I got they were gracious enough to give me a day off the theory in theory now today is that I'm gonna work on this 385 383 385 inch and I've been trying to get going all my labor and all my money has been diverted somehow to the green Oldsmobile since it arrived and I've had to ignore everything else go figure that so in theory Tina's going to do brakes work on the brakes on the Oldsmobile today I'm going to try to get the bottom end at least the bottom end of the 385 built and also I got the machine I dropped my old the pig in a poke block off to the machine shop the guys who do the race engines <coughs> And he said that leaving the crank, the pistons, and everything, call me back. He said, I think we can salvage it. You got a piece of junk, but I'm going to deburr the crank. I'm going to balance it, clean it, and polish it. We'll rework the block. Since you've already spent the money, you have nothing to lose but your labor and a set of gaskets, a set of rings, and inserts. So we'll go ahead and try to get that built after we build the 385. And then I suppose the Oldsmobile Rocket 303 comes next. Here's the reason you want to carefully examine everything before you start assembling it. These are brand new pistons and they just got back from the machine shop. And if you notice there's a little nick in the skirt right there. And right on top. Let's see if we can get a little better look at it. There's a nick on the top of the piston too. That'll cause pre-ignition. So I'm going to have to smooth out those little flaws that happen somehow sometime in handling at the machine shop. I generally also go back and deburr, just knock off any sharp edges that I have on the piston dome. But that little spot right there, that nick right there, that caused pre-ignition. Be sure you check everything before you assemble it. Carefully. Piston ring gap is a boring subject. It's a boring job, but I want to talk about it just a minute because it's really critical. The rule of thumb is basically roughly, the guy that taught me, four thousandths per inch of bore. So we've got 440 right here. So that's at least 16 thousandths ring gap that you want. I put the ring in, squared it, dropped it down in the cylinder, one inch below the top of the deck there, and I have eight thousandths clearance. Now most people don't even bother to check that. I'll just go ahead and stick it in there, put the rings on the pistons and go. Eight thousandths clearance is not going to give you enough clearance. You're going to end up with broken pistons, broken rings, scored cylinder walls. Make sure that you check that ring gap and make sure you cut those rings or file those rings to where you have what you're supposed to have. This ring manufacturer actually, I calculated it out, and they want eighteen thousandths clearance. I had eight thousandths to begin with, so now I'm going to go back and gap the rings. Ring gap is critical for another reason. If you don't have enough ring gap, if the gap is too tight, you're going to break pistons, you're going to break rings, you're going to score cylinder walls. If the ring gap is excessive amount, you're going to have an excessive amount of blow-by. <clears throat> I had a guy come to me one time who used to build engines in pairs, identical race engines in pairs, and he said, I got something wrong every time I build two engines, they're identical engines, one's fast, one is slow. And, and it can't be it. That can't be. What is it? And I said, Well, I, I don't know. What are you? What are you doing? He said, Everything is identical. Same cam, lifters, <coughs> cylinder bore, clearances, <coughs> intake, carburetor. Everything is identical. A uh, torque, double torque plate, same cross hatch pattern, same grit, same rings, same compressions, cl same clearance. Everything. But the engines are not the same. They're identical, but they're not the same. <coughs> so I asked him. I said, If you run a cylinder. <clears throat> a cylinder leakage test. He said, no, I don't know what a cylinder leakage test is. So I told him, run a cylinder, cylinder leakage test and come back and tell me if those identical engines are identical. He called me a few days later and said, guess what? My identical engines are not identical. The fast one has very little leakage as compared to the slow one. See what's happened, he had excess amount of ring gap, which I found out once we tore the engine down. The, gaps weren't, the rings weren't gapped properly. The weak engine had an excessive ring gap and therefore excessive blow by and therefore not enough as near as much compression. So ring gap is critical. Too tight or too loose. 
make sure you do it just right and make sure you make the square cuts on the rings and we're getting ready to gap these rings right now I gap one side and then I square it up and we'll show you that in just a minute and then when I go back and check it I want to make sure that those gaps when they close up that they are closed and they're square and I did a good job Sneak up on it, so I'm gonna check it right there. That's 3,000 cut. I know I need more. But we'll go ahead and check on it anyway. I'd rather sneak up on it than cut too much. <clears throat> yeah, I got a nice, nice square cut. Nice square cut on that gap. You can either dress them off by hand with a file, in which case you always go to the inside of the ring, or you can use this really fine stone to dress them off. The wheel rotates this way. I'll hand dress this one on the inside with a real fine file. Okay, looks good. No square cut, no sharp edges. Put the two gaps together. I'm sure you can't see. Perfect, perfect square cut. So we'll put it back in the piston, in the cylinder wall, see what we have. Can you see it? Perfect, perfect square cut. Okay, let's see how close we got. I got an 18 thousandths. And it's a perfect fit. 18 thousandths. Perfect. Alright. Boring task, time consuming task, but makes a lot of difference between a good engine and a bad engine. <laughs> and we want we want a good strong one. Now I'll dedicate this ring, this, uh, these, these rings that I gap, I'll dedicate them to that cylinder. This is <coughs> 2468, this is cylinder 134, this is cylinder 2, it'll go on piston 2, 2468. Each ring is fitted to each cylinder and designated to that cylinder. Alright, there's one down, a lot to go. <laughs> it's cold and wet in here today. Anyway, had I been smart, I would have done a little bit of research. I just thought this was going to be a drop in. Small block Chevy in a second gen Nova, no problem. The only problem I expected was clearancing the crankshaft against in the rods for the block and the camshaft. I didn't anticipate having clearance problems with the oil pump also. Now I bought a special, this is a front sump uh, block. It's different from most small block Chevys. This has a front sump. So I bought the special oil pump. I bought the special oil pump drive shaft, I bought the special oil pan and the special oil pump pickup and now I find out that that's not going to work. A little, little research and I'm finding out that they're recommending that I buy a reverse pickup system so it's like a normal Chevy but that's going to cost me another four or five hundred dollars. I've got to do some suspension modifications also to get it to fit. So now I'm decide what I got to make a decision what am I going to do. Am I going to put the 385 in the stroker, spend the extra 500 bucks just to get it to fit or I've got a 350 that I just got back from the machine shop here last week or two ago. It's ready to go to 355. I can build the 355 use all the components that I bought here. Just build 355 for the Nova and change this and make that for something else, the stroker for something else. So not sure I want to spend the extra 500 bucks and the extra suspension work just to get a 383 in the Nova, so I'm thinking I'll go ahead, I guess, and do a 355 in the Nova since I already have the parts sitting here ready to go. Take the 383, and build it with the normal rear sump, and put it in one of those cars outside. Do your due diligence. <laughs> Check and do a little research before you get ready to do something like this to save you a little bit of money, a little, little bit of anguish. I decided to drop the pan on, on the engine and Rotate the crank and see if I have any clearance issues with the stroker crankshaft. Um, 
this is what I found. I'll give it a turn. See that? We'll do it again. See the pan lift up? Hear the noise? Bang! Stroker crank is hitting the pan. Not good. Let's take a closer look at it. Alright, one more time. It's a good thing I decided to check this. It's not something I anticipated being a problem. Oops. There it is. Lift the pan completely off the engine block. Not good. Alright, to make it even more fun, let me show you something else I found. Now let's listen here if we hear any contact or see any movement in this pan should it contact the pan. No obvious contact. I don't know how much clearance there is, but there is no contact at all. And this pan is sitting on the block without the oil pan gasket. All right, well, whatever good it is, I don't know, but <laughs> it makes me happy. Now here's the other surprise I had. Let's see if I can get this shot. If not, can't I'll reposition it. Notice the oil pump is sitting on top of the rear main cap. And the connecting rod is getting ready to swing around. Let's rotate it. Bam. See that? Contact with the oil pump. Not good. Let's take another quick look at the pump. If I was to try to clearance it, I've marked it with blue, blue magic marker where I'm going to have to cut in order to get any kind of clearance there. And it looks like I'm going to be into that plug. I'm not even sure if I cut that much, much material away. I would still have clearance. And on the other side, by the pickup, the same thing. I have to cut away at least that much material at the pickup point in order to make this pump work. I don't think I wanted to cut up a brand new pump. So we'll try something else. Well, this has been a real learning situation on the 383, 385 stroker. I got the bottom end built, I got ready to put in a camshaft and degree it, and guess what happened? Rods are, the rods are hitting the camshaft, it looks like four different locations. I heard about that, I anticipated that, I just kind of, kind of hoped it wasn't going to happen to me. But that, I haven't been very lucky on that engine for some reason. Anyway, the rods are hitting the camshaft, I either have to take it all apart and grind on the rods, Get everything rebalanced, or I'm going to try a small base circle camshaft. So I got a small base circle cam ordered. I'm going to give that a try. Hopefully, I'll get lucky and it'll clear. And all I have to do is just change push rod lengths, and I should be good to go. Anyway, it's a learning situation. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm learning the hard way. This is my first 380, 383 stroker build. I just want to share the information with you guys and let you know what you can anticipate. I appreciate you watching. We'll bring you up to date on some of those other projects here shortly. Thanks.